Hey, where are my clothes that were here? I threw them all away. Why would you do that? It's if you don't have clothes to wear, you can't go to work, right? It's three months into our marriage. My husband, Mike, suddenly told me to quit my job. But despite refusing to do so, he went ahead and threw away all my suits and jackets. Seeing my bewildered expression, Vic smirked, not realizing this would mark the beginning of his downfall. Mike and I met three years ago when he visited my company on a sales call. Actually, we were just business acquaintances, but eventually we felt a mutual attraction and began dating two years later. He was incredibly kind and respected me, the perfect boyfriend in every way. Afterward, he proposed, and of course, I said yes, and we became an official couple. Just a week into our blissful married life, Mike said something utterly shocking. Oh, when are you quitting your job? What? What's the point of working now? Why not quit and become a stay-at-home wife? I'm not quitting my job. That why not? Women are supposed to stay home after marriage, right? Otherwise, look, I can't provide. I had just been promoted to a vital role. Quitting would cause inconvenience in various aspects. Mil Azler, I found my current job fulfilling. It wasn't just about making money. I even felt fortunate about my co-workers and believed I wouldn't find a better company. Make mentioned societal expectations, but with dual-income families being the norm, his views seemed a bit outdated. I don't want to. I still want to work for a while. We can live off my income, can't we? It's not about the money. My role at work is essential. Any female role can easily be replaced by a man. Why not step down sooner and pass it on to a junior? I can't do something so irresponsible. You'll probably have kids soon and you go on maternity leave anyway. I'm not thinking about kids yet. But what are you talking about? You have to give birth. Um... Sarah! Oh, do you need to continue my family line? Start sooner, it's better start sooner. I never thought Mike would feel this way. He never used to talk like this when we were dating. Is it something I did wrong? I was taken aback by his archaic mindset, bordering on misogyny. Good job. Um, it's not taking your job. Hand in your resignation tomorrow. Um, I had no intention of quitting my job. So, I went to work the next day as usual. And the day after that, the nights later, I heard it again. Why are you still gonna want? Didn't I tell you to just stay home and take care of the house? Why are you so fixated on making me a stay-at-home wife? Us of the wives of married men at my company stay at home. If you work, people will think we're poor. Got it? I don't think that's true. Science bet, Hori. Does I'm set to become the next CEO. In truth, Mike is part of a family-run business destined to inherit it. His father, who started the company, passed away in an accident years ago, and now his mother, Akron, is a highly competent CEO who's expanding the business. I remember Catherine being quite sophisticated at family meetings, always dressed in luxurious clothing. It's nice to meet you. I hear you also work. Yes. I admire strong working women. Please look after my son. She was a clear-cut career woman and I liked her for it. 
but Mike seemed unable to defy her. Perhaps because he grew up in a family that runs a business. Mike appears to want to flaunt his wealth. Um, before we got married, he never acted this way. But as soon as we started living together, he kept saying things like, um, I'm the future CEO, you know. Oh, there's such a thing as public image. Eventually, all of my family's assets will be mine. I don't think his parents being wealthy should have anything to do with us. Since then, he has been in insisting that I quit my job almost every time we meet. Little by little, it became painful and we stopped talking all together. The atmosphere at home turned toxic and even coming back became a chore. Then, one day, something happened. Huh. Where's my jacket? Fix when I opened the closet to put away the laundry. All my jackets and suits were missing. Did Mike take them to the cleaners for me? I wondered. So, I asked him. Hey, where are the clothes that were here? Well, I threw them out, no? What? If you don't have any clothes to wear, you can't go to work, right? What are you doing? I don't understand why you won't quit your job. I couldn't believe Mike would go this far. He thinks if there are no clothes, I won't go to work. Unbelievable. I could just buy more clothes. How can he not think of that? But Mike continues grinning ear to ear. If you want to work, you'll have to go naked. Good luck keeping your job like that. Mike looked pleased with himself, but the next day I wore the suit I'd taken to the dry cleaners. Be to avoid this happening again. I changed into casual clothes at my office locker before coming home. My co-workers looked at me strangely, but I dodged their questions. Ever since then, Mike thinking I quit my job has been in a good mood every day, but it didn't last long. But it didn't last long. One day, I came home to find Mike fuming. What's going on here? What are you talking about? Your co-worker saw you at your office today. You embarrassed me. I told everyone at work you were a stay-at-home wife. Really? You thought no clothes would keep me from working? Use your brain. I don't mock me. The next morning, I found all my clothes except for pajamas were gone. He did it again. I can't even go shopping like this. I see Mike sipping his coffee with a smug look on his face. Just what he's doing is so childish. It's just frustrating. Where did the gentleman I married go? I've thrown it all away. Um, so, um, Drew, now you can't go to work. Can you get, I'm, plus you can't even go out and buy a suit in your pajamas. At this point, I was beyond anger and simply sighed. You threw everything away. I had no more patience. It was time to turn the tables. Bake would be the one to go through hell now. Of course, I see. You'll just buy new clothes and suits sneakily. Those weren't my clothes, though. What are you talking about? They were in your closet, they must be your clothes. You didn't notice, did you? Guess what? Those are Catherine's clothes. For a moment, Mike was dumbstruck, and they almost burst into laughter. Actually, Catherine had sent over her belongings last night. My in-laws were renovating their home and had decided to stay with us for a month. Knowing the bags contained clothes, I had hung them in the closet to prevent wrinkles. 
You knew the package from Catherine arrived yesterday, right? And yet you threw it away without checking. What do you think Catherine would say? Oh, now that you mention it. Stop it. Digging through the trash is just embarrassing. I try to stop Mike as he dashes out, but he snaps back at me. Excuse me, the fault lies with you. I'll contact Catherine now. She's going to find out sooner or later. There's no point in hiding it. I reach out to Catherine to explain the situation, and she shows up at our house that afternoon. Her face is filled with anger. You threw away my clothes. It was an honest mistake. Don't get so worked up. I thought they were Sarah's. I thought if she didn't have any clothes, she would have to quit her job. You don't just go buying people's clothes and then throw them away. What were you thinking? And what does her working have to do with you disposing of things? Look, I I'll buy you new clothes. Just give me a break. Um... Mike was clearly overwhelmed by Catherine's fury. But more crushing words followed. Some of those clothes were gifts from your father, you know. Oh, what is Sam's? The amount of money can replace those. So what are you gonna do about it? Well, your selfish actions caused all of this. Do you understand? What can I do? I have some good deeds done. He's the one at fault, not me. He pointed at me, and it was clear there was no love left in him. What are you talking about? You did this on your own. Stop joking. If you'd quit your job, this wouldn't have happened. Mike was acting like a petulant child. By the way, I met the department head's wife recently. She's working part-time at a supermarket. Or aren't all the married people in your company stay-at-home spouses? That's not. She said that now that the kids are grown, she wanted to work and her husband supports her. Shut up. That's different from us. Chris Mike's face turns beet red with rage. I let out a deep sigh. You can't even take responsibility for what you've said. Is someone like this fit to be the next company president? He's clearly not. We don't need such a self-centered person in our company. Bike suddenly quiets down and timidly addresses Catherine. But I, I'm, the, I'm the heir, right? Who decided that? I'm telling you. I'm not letting you take over the company. Oh, why? I was, I just threw it Sarah's clothes. That has nothing to do with the company. Mike, on the verge of tears, continued to make excuses. What's so wrong leaving my wife? Isn't she supposed to be my property? Oh, she should just do as I please. At this point, even Catherine was utterly fed up. Are you serious? I've been talking to Sarah about this for a while now, ever since you first threw away her suits and told her to quit her job. Uh, you told mom? You want Sarah to quit her job, not just to make yourself look good. You haven't even considered her career. Enough! Bernard by Catherine's words and clearly defeated. I delivered the final blow to Mike. We're getting a divorce. By why? Because I can't stand your selfishness. That's definitely for the best. It has to be a joke, right? Suddenly, Mike switched gears, begging me to reconsider. I won't tell you you quit your job anymore. I'll buy bank the clothes I threw away. Please don't leave me. He reached out with his tear and snot soaked hand, but I brushed it aside. This is all on you. 
characters, if I came as Dovia, and if I can't even become a CEO, and I like, lose Sarah, lose Sarah, how am I supposed to survive from the money? Why not just get a job? Funny cold. Uh, let's start over. Don't change. I promise. I have no feelings left for you. Goodbye. You expect me to believe that now? Though with that, Mike broke down crying pathetically. I packed my bags that day and decided to stay at a nearby hotel for a while. From I felt invigorated thinking about the future. Soon enough, the divorce was finalized. I'll be financially stable for a while thanks to the settlement. Mike got fired from his company and didn't receive any sympathy from Catherine. Not only is he jobless, but he also lost the connection with his family. The price for his selfishness was astronomical. He's even working day and night to pay me the $40 in alimony, and he's still not catching up taking loans from loan sharks. As for me, I'm focusing on skill development at my current job and enjoying every day. Ethrin and I still keep in touch. She's a great friend and we often share career advice or have meals together. If I hope that one day I can be like Catherine running my own business. But for now, I'm doing my best with the opportunities in front of me.